Hello friends, welcome back to online chalkboard. We are dealing with class 10 chapter 1 real numbers and we have discussed so far about Euclid's lemma and Euclid's al division algorithm. And today we would be discussing the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. If you haven't watched the previous video, the, the link is available in the description box. Do watch them and then follow this. And if you are visiting this channel for the first time, do subscribe to this channel and for notification do press the bell icon. This is going to be very useful for you and as well as your friends. So please to share it with them as well. So let's start with fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Okay, before stating the theorem about arithmetics, have you wondered how we can write as any simple number? Just see 10. I'm just 10 can be written as 10 if I divide by 2. I'll get 5. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Then 5 is another prime number. I'm dividing it by 5. I'll get remainder. Uh, the quotient would be 1. So 10 can be written as 10 is equal to 2 into 5. Suppose there's another big number. Let's take a greater number 180. I can divide 180 as 180 can be written as 2 into 90. 90 can be written as 2 into 45. 45 can be written as 5. I am dividing these numbers with prime numbers. 5 into 9. And this 9 is 3 into 3. So you see 180 can, can be written as 180 equals 2 into 2 into 3 into 3 into 5. That is 2 square into 3 square into 5 raised to 1. So you see any number can be written as the product of prime numbers. This is exactly what fundamental theorem states. Take page number 8, fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Every composite number can be expressed as the product of primes. And this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occurs. This says that, you see this is a composite number. You know the difference between composite and a prime number? What is a prime number? The prime number is that can only be written as product of itself and 1. Okay. And a composite number is that has more than uh, the product of itself and 1. Like suppose 8. 8 can be written as 1 into 2 into 2 into 2. Right. Or it can be written as 1 into 4 into 4. 2. So, uh, 8 is a composite number and 2 is a prime number. There are many other prime numbers like 3. 3 can only be written as 1 into 3. Uh, and 5 can be written as 5, 1 into 5. So, uh, the fundamental theorem states that any composite number can only be written as a product of prime and that's always unique. That order may change like you can write uh, 2 square into 5 then 3 square. They would be actually equal. Writing any number as product of prime number is said to is said prime factorization. I am writing the factors of 180 in terms of its prime numbers. So, it is called prime factorization of natural numbers. So, in general we can say if x is any natural number, x can be written as the product of prime numbers like p1 into p2 into p3 to etc pn where p1, p2, p3 etc are all prime numbers. If we are arranging in such a way that p1 is less than p2 is less than p 3 is less than pn and if more than two prime numbers are equal then it will come as powers like p1 and p2 are equal we'll write p1 and p1 are equal p, p2 p1 are equal then we'll, i'll write p1 square power will come so this is how we write any natural number is product of prime numbers now let's look into the first example here example 5 consider the number 4 is to n where n is a natural number Check whether there is any value of n for which 4 is to n ends with the digit 0. Here in this example, we are given a number 4 is to n. And they have asked if for any value of that n, can you find, uh, can 4 is to n become end with 0? Like your question asks, 4 is to n, can it end with digit 0? Like, uh, you know, 
10 is a number with nth with digit 0. So, in the expansion of 4 raised to n, 4 raised to n, like if n, n equal to 1, it becomes 4 into 4 raised to 1, 4. And when n equal to 2, it becomes 4 raised to 2 equals 4 into 4, 16. Here it ends with 6. So, they are asking if there any number, any natural number n such that it will end with 0. For any number to end with 0, it must be divisible by 5. So, just check 20, 30, any number you consider, they are ending with 0, it must be divisible by 5. You see, 4 raised to n, the prime factorization is 2 raised to 2, the whole raised to n. Right? 2 into 2, 4 is 2 into 2, that is 2 square the whole raised to n, that is 2 raised to 2n. So, nowhere in the prime factorization of 4 comes 5. 4 raised to n is not divisible by 5 or we can write 5 is not in the prime factorization right prime factorization of 4 so the, by the uniqueness of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic we'll say that 4 raised to n will never end with 0 for any value of n because in the fine factorization 5 is not common. That is the uh, uniqueness says that there is only one and only one way of uh, expanding this by writing 4 raised to n uh, product of prime numbers. Example 6. Find the LCM and HCF of 6 and 20 by prime factorization method. Question asks us to find LCM and HCF of 6 and 20 using prime factorization. We learned how to find HCF using Euclid division algorithm. Now we need to find LCM and HCF using prime factorization method. That is expanding these terms in terms of its prime factors. 6 can be written as 1 into 2 into 3. We just have to write the prime factors. So I am not writing 1. The prime factors of 6 are 2 and 3. 20 can be written as 4 into 5 that is 2 into 2 into 5 or it can be written as 2 square into 5. So the LCM of 6 and 20, LCM of 6 and 20 is equal to the greatest power of both. Like here 2 the power is 1 and here it is 2. So 2 raised to 2 into the power of 3 is 1 here is 0. So 3 raised to 1. Here the power of 5 is 0 and here it is 1. So 5 raised to 1. So LCM is actually product of the greatest. So LCM is the product of the greatest power of each prime factors involved. Here the prime factors involved in the first question was 2 square into 5. So the greatest power for both is 2 square and I have written it here. Greatest power involved. Uh, uh, that's LCM is the product of the greatest power involved. And um, you can also look at it in the other way. What I am actually doing is here 2 came both. This, so 1 times 2. Then rest of things I am writing. Into 2. Then 3, 5. Into 3, into 5. That is I got 2 square into 3 into 5. This is how we look for LCM. That is or, or we can say product of the greatest power of each prime numbers. Greatest power whichever with the greatest power you can write it down. Now let's look into the HCF of 6 and 20. Here highest common factor. You see here 6 and uh, 2 and 2 that is highest. 2. 2 raised to 1. Here 3, there is nothing common, 5, nothing common. So the only thing that is common in both places is, if we write 2 into 2 into 5, common both side 1. So we will write 1, 2. It is common. So we will take it as 1, 2 and write it here, HCF is 2. HCF is the product of the smallest power of each prime factors in the number. Here 2 into 3 equals, this is 2 square into 5. HCF would be the smallest power if uh, it's coming to coming in both sides. The smallest power would be considered 2 raised to 1. 
product of the smallest power of each prime factor in the number. Now you consider a relation. Now you consider a relation here. You see LCM is 2 square into 3 into 5 and HCF is 2. Just take the product of these two. I am taking the product of HCF and LCM. HCF of 6 and 20 is uh, 2 and LCM is 60. HCF into LCM that is equal to 2 into 60. I will get 120. Now consider the product of these two numbers. 6 into 20 is also 120. So we understand that from this we can in general say that suppose A and B are two numbers then LCM of A, B into HCF of HCF of A, B is actually the product of those two numbers A into B. Now let us move on to the next example, example 7. Example 7, page number 10. Find the HCF of 96 and 404 by prime factorization method. Hence, find their LCM. Here we need to find the HCF using prime factorization method and not the Euclid's algorithm. Here they have uh, specifically mentioned you need to use the prime factor fact you need to use the prime factorization method. And from that you need to find the LCM. We know that HCF into LCM is a product of the numbers. We'll use that. Fine. Let's see the prime factors of 96 and 404. 96, 2 is a it will go by 2, get 4, 48, 2's are, divide, get 24 quotient, divide, 2's are, 12, 2's are, 6, 2's are, 3, fine. So the prime factorization of 96 is 2, how many times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 1 time, 2 raised to 5 into 3. Now look into the prime factorization of 404. It will go by 2, 202, 2, 101, 101. So the prime factorization of 404 is 2 raised to 2 into 101. So the HCF is clear. HCF is the least common power which is common to both. HCF of 96 and 404 is here. 2 is coming common to both. So, and the least power is 2 raised to 2. So, the answer is HCF is 2 raised to 2, that is 4. And from this, we are asked to find the LCM. We use the relation LCM into HCF equals 96 into 404. So, HCF would be, so LCM would be LCM equals 96 into 404 divided by HCF. Since here HCF is in multiplication, it will come down and it would be 96 into 404 divided by HCF here is 4. Cancel. 101, 101 into 96. That is equal to 96, 96. LCM of 96 and 404 is 9696. This is how we find LCM using HCF and similarly we can find HCF using LCM also. Now come to example 8. Find the HCF and LCM of 6, 72 and 120 using prime factorization method. HCF of and LCM of 6, 72, 120. 6, 72, 120 using prime factorization method. 6 can be written as 2 into 3. Now look into 72. 72 goes by 2. 36, 2, 18, 2, 9, 2 into 9. Then 3 into 3 is 9. Yeah. So the prime factorization of 72 is 2 raised to 3 into 2 square. 3 raised to 2. Now the prime factorization of 120. 2 is our 60. 2, 60 can be raised 2 into 30. Again 2, 15. 2 into 15. Now it will go by 3. 3 into 5. 
5. So, the prime factorization of 120 is 2 raised to 3 into 3 into 5. Now, let us consider the HCF. HCF would be HCF of these three numbers is the least power. You see, the least power 3 is coming common to all 3. And the least power of 2 here is 1. So, 2 raised to 1. And the 3 is also coming in all 3. And the least power of 3 is here 1. 5 is not coming in all 3. Therefore, it is not the common factor. So, here the HCF is 6. So, my question is, can we find LCM using the HCF? Is HCF into LCM 6 into 72 into 120? No. HCF is into LCM is not equal to product of 3. That is only true when it is 2 numbers. In 3 numbers case, this we cannot find L, uh, HCF into LCM is not equal to product of these numbers. So, we have to find LCM separately. The relation between LCM and HCF of 3 numbers is given in page number 19 or note to the reader. You can read through that. You can see on the screen there is a box that is available uh, on your page, page number 19. You can refer that to find how LCM and HCF are related when it comes when it is a case of 3 different numbers. Now moving back to our question. The LCM of 672 and 120. Well, let's see the LCM. LCM is actually the greatest power. Here in all 3, 2 is also coming and the greatest power of 2 is 3. 2 raised to 3 into. See the greatest power of 3 in all 3 is 2. 3 raised to 2. The greatest power of 5 is 1. 5 raised to 1. So this is the LCM. 8 into 9 into 5. 360. 316 to 6 is not the product of these three numbers. So with this we come to the end of fundamental theorem of arithmetic. And now let us start with our exercise, exercise 1.2. Question number 1. Express each number as the product of its prime factor. Page number 11. Question number 1. Express each number as the product of its prime factors. Let us do question number 3. 3. 8, 2, 5. After going through a few of the examples, Q would have understood how to express a number as product of its prime factor. Let us do this question. 3, 8, 2, 5. Here 5 is the last digit. So for sure this number would be divisible by 5. So divisible by 5. Dividing by 5, the quotient is 5 into 7 is 35. 7. The remainder is 3. 3 comes here. 32. 6. In 5 into 6 is 30. The remainder is to 25. So, 765. Now, again 5 comes here. Dividing by 5. 5 ones are 5. And remainder is 2. 26. 5 fives are 25. Remainder is 1. 15. 5 threes are 50. 153. 153. Is it divisible by 2? No, the last digit is not even. Is it divisible by 3? Just add all these numbers. This it's 9. 9 is a, a divisible, 9 is a multi, uh, yeah, 9 is a multiple of 3. Therefore, it's divis this 153 is divisible by 3 because when we add, you will get 1 plus 5 plus 3 is equal to 9 and 9 is a multiple of 3. Dividing it by 3, 3 into 5, 15, 1, 51. Is 51 divisible by 3? 5 plus 1, 6. Yeah, it's also a multiple of 3, 3. 1, 22, 17. 17 is a prime number. So, 3,825 can be written as 2, if I am just ordering it, uh, 3 is the least, smallest prime number. So, 3 square into 5 square into 17. So, 3,825 is written as uh, 3 square into 5 square into 17. This is the prime factorization. Now, just look into one more example. Let's look into the second one. 5,005. Whenever you get a number, you first have to check whether it is even. If it is even, first of all, it will go by 2. It can be divided by 2. If it is not even, you will check it is divisible by 5. 
uh, it can be uh, checked by looking into the last digit 5 if it's divisible by 5 5 1 0 0 1 now how will you check whether it's divisible by any other number it's not divisible by 2 for sure now what about 5 no last digit is not 5 and what about 3 some of these two these numbers also not a multiple of 3 so now in the next prime number is 7 how to check the divisibility of 7 divisibility of 7 is checked by you see you will double the last digit you will get 2 and subtract it from the rest of the terms 100 minus 2 it is 98 is 98 uh, multiple of 7 what will you do we will double 98 again 8 into 2 is 16 and then we subtract 9 16 from 9 I will get minus 7 or 16 minus 7 so 7 is a multiple so 1001 uh, is divisible by 7 since we got uh, after doing doubling and subtracting a 7 as a multiple or if we get 0 uh, then, then we will say that 1001 is a multiple of 7 if it was like you see for 21 we are multiplying 2 uh, one, one, doubling it 1 uh, is doubled you get 2 then subtracting 2 from the first term you get 0 so 21 is also a multiple of 7 is 143 divisible by 7 multiple uh, 3 into 2 6, 6 14 minus 6 is equal to 8 which is not a multiple of 7 therefore 143 is not a multiple of 7 now let us look into the next prime number 11 it is a multiple of 11 you see uh, how, how do we check the multiplicity of 11 is if they are 2 digit number you will add this to get 1 plus 1 that is equal to 2 and then subtract it from the middle term 2 minus 2 that is equal to 0 then 121 is a multiple here also similarly 143 you will add these two 1 plus 3 equal to 4 and subtract it from the middle term 4 minus 4 equal to 0 since you got it 0 both side therefore it is also a multiple of this is a multiple of 11 11 1 13 13 is a prime number 13 so 5005 can be written as 5 into 7 into 11 into 13 this is the prime factorization of 5005 you can do the rest of the two questions similarly how we have done the prime factorization do it as do practice those questions and rest of the questions we'll discuss in the next video so do practice more questions and if you like this video and if you find it useful do share it with your friends and stay tuned thank you for watching